next year will be Sean Dyche's 10th year in charge of Burnley. Um, can you see yourself managing one club for 10 years? <laughs> of course I can. If you are happy where you are, and, and most importantly, if they are happy with the job that you are doing, I think it's a, a really strong relationship. Um, I think what he's done, again, is, is remarkable and the way he's kept the team in the Premier League. But um, yeah, in this job, I think you have to go almost day by day. Yeah, you, you um, at Everton and at Arsenal, you played for managers who'd been there for a very long time with David and, and Arsene. Uh, what kind of advantages do you think that gives a manager to be there for so long and to be able to shape the club in the way they want it to be shaped? Well, to have a stability in football, it's, it's really complicated. But uh, when you have a stability, you have good leadership, um, a very clear ownership to take the club um, where they want, and, um, and you generate some trust between the big decision makers at the club, I think anything is possible. Um, because through difficult moments, if you are clear that, OK, this is the route that we are taking, and we're not going to hesitate because of one or two results, I think at the end, um, really nice things can come up. So for me, that's the main advantage. Players, the staff, everybody knows that we are where we are and, and we believe in what we do and, and things that they're not going to be shaky every single time something happens. Um, I think that brings a lot of security and, and stability to a football club. When do you think you'll be at that point with Arsenal or has it already happened? I don't know, but my aim is not to be there. My aim is to challenge myself every day, and I think I need that as well. So I think about tomorrow and how can I do today to affect tomorrow and, and be in a better position tomorrow. And then day by day, the good thing in this profession is that weeks and months go so fast, you know, and a year ago, um, if you would have told me everything that has happened, I would say, Sam, what are you talking about? But <laughs> the reality is a lot of have happened, so let's go day by day. And just finally for me, how um, how close now is the team to being what you visualised as a Mikel Arteta team in terms of the build-up, the patterns of play, everything seems... Very really far. Very, what very far. Expect? Yeah. There's still a lot to improve, a lot of quality to add, much more efficient in decision-making, much quicker um, to open situation up when the advantages are there. Many more situations to finish when the advantages are obtained. Um, more control of games, more defensive actions in the opponent's half, less giveaways in our own half, more clean sheets. It's a lot to do, more goals to score, more creativity. It's a lot to do. Are you getting there? Do you feel it's on the... Yes, I am. I am. I think... Um, I think I mentioned that when you look the the previous game that you play against the team a few months ago and you look where the team is right now, I think it's uh, always a good um, way of uh, seeing the progression and um, and I've seen that. Thanks, Mikel. Thanks, you. Thanks, Sam. And finally to John Cross from the Mirror. Hello, Mikel. Um, uh, can I just kick off with, with with one about the Europa League? Actually, Arsenal fans are not happy, Mikel, because the the Spurs. Uh, ties have been flipped haven't they now you know it's ahead of the north london derby you, you, we all know what that means you know the priority for the north london derby do you think it's fair because it's hard to understand why you have flipped that bearing in mind no fans are in anyway do you i mean does that give them an edge is it unfair what do you think it does uh, unfortunately we're not going to change that uh, we can raise our voices and we should do that um, because we want to have at least two teams that are in, in equal conditions um, but the decision has been made and uh, and that's it. And I don't want to use one bit of an excuse to go towards that game saying oh, they have an advantage. So, no, probably I would use that to take it in our advantage. That's it. No, fair enough. OK. It's a year this weekend, I think, Mikel, since, since the fans, you know, since everything happened, basically, everything blew up. Obviously, it was your... You know, we know it was your positive test that sort of almost seemed to be the catalyst that was held up at the time. How, in, the, in that past year, obviously the fans are not in, not in. How, we've obviously missed them uh, as well, but has that made life more difficult? Has it made it easier in some aspects? Because, you know, at times, it clearly, you know, we've had some wonderful highs, but had some, had some lows. 
how, how would they have reacted? And, you know, has it made it harder? Or For me, I only see negative, obviously, is uh, mm. not having fans around, not having that passion, that energy that provides having people supporting and watching you in home games and away games and, and having that link and that relation. For me, it's, uh, it's all negative. The, the way we do that is to give joy and happiness to people. And the best way to do it is when you are able to provide something and look in somebody's eyes or just the body language of somebody and, and that creates something inside you uh, that, is, that is beautiful. And if they have to show disappointment, okay, you want to see why it is and it's a fair disappointment. Because from TV, I think everything looks a little bit uh, different. And, and as well, the players need really them back and, and just play for them, which is what we do. It, it was at Burnley at home, which felt maybe the lowest point, you, you know, and, and, and I guess, you know, you've got them this weekend, but you, you, I don't know how they would have reacted if they'd been there in greater numbers, but basically... Yeah, you know, obviously, the game, I, again, the game, that game was very strange and I looked it back uh, yesterday mm -hmm. and um, the amount of chances that we created, but yeah, we went down to 10 miles, we can see it from a set piece and then it's a disaster, but this, is, this game is like that. You know, when you play four times with 10 men, in the, the amount of games that we play, you're going to put yourself in a really difficult position. And um, and probably they won't accept that. But that's good because that's the standards. They set the standards of the football club. And the demands that they have is because there is a history related and there are some expectations. And we are here to, to fulfil them. Because mm, your expectations are higher, aren't they, than where you are league, yeah. league table? Clearly. Absolutely. When you look at the league table, it's not acceptable where we are. We are a football club and we should not be nowhere near here. And, and if somebody is happy with that, I think he's in the wrong place. Sure. Can I just finally ask you about David Luiz? He's having ever such a good run, Mikel. I, I, we, we know his future's maybe up for discussion in, in, in the summer. What, what does he give you both as a defender, as a leader, as a character in the dressing room? He, he, he seems a really positive presence in the last few weeks it is extremely positive um the professional is uh, how he looks after himself but as well how he looks after his teammates he's always willing to help he's always uh, really positive around it he's got a huge experience of how to win things uh, but as well how to manage uh, difficult moments and you need that and then it gives um, a lot of composure and uh, to the team both with and without the ball he's a presence he's a leader and um, I am someone that um, is playing really well at the moment. And what I want is that he keeps doing that till the end of the season and I will make that decision together. Thanks so much. Good luck Saturday. Hi. Just on um, just on Emil, is it is it realistic for him to to look at what Bakayo has done and, and dream about breaking in to the England squad later this month? I know Southgate's going to have to pick one for these, <laughs> these March games. I think it's possible. I think um, if he shows the same determination as Bukayo, um, be as humble as it is and play with the personality that he's done, I think he's got a great chance. And um, Emel has got all the attributes, all the qualities um, that needs to play for this football club and, in my opinion, to play for the national team. After it's about finding the consistency level that is required, obviously, because that level is as good as it gets. But um, I think he shows in moments in this season what he can do. So it's about now doing it for longer period, adding more assists, more goals, being a threat all the time and working as hard as he's been doing because um, I think he's been phenomenal for us. And just one on Bakai, he's, for England so far, he's been playing in that sort of left wing back role. But do you think now he's shown he's got the ability to be in that squad to challenge, you know, Sterling, Rashford, Foden as a forward rather than a, than a left back? I don't know. That's a decision for for the manager to decide the best position. Um, the good thing about Bukayo is his versatility and he adapts very quickly to every position because he's a, a really intelligent player. So uh, they can use him and I'm sure he will be happy as long as he's in the team. Thanks, Mikael.